When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Imagine we're given a molecular model kit, such as this one, this would be your kit. And you were told to actually model the ionization process of strong and weak acids. So this would be, for example, a strong acid. We have hydrogen chloride and water, and that combines to form hydronium ions and chloride ions. So this is your ionization process, and you're going to do this with just your model kit. Now, before we start, so we will go over a model example of this scenario, but just imagine what were the pros and cons if you did this with a model kit. So that's actually quite important to know the advantages and disadvantages of doing a model. So pros would obviously be, it would be hands-on, so it'd be hands-on experience. And that's really good because you can, often people can learn a lot better when they have a hands-on experience. Also, it's a way to simplify a more or less complex procedure. And again, often simplification allows you to understand the concepts much better. So these were some of the pros, but there are also some cons when it comes to models. And the bigger cons are often they can create misconceptions. I'll quickly go over what that means as well. A misconception, but the idea with, for example, this here, and we've got hydrogen chloride, which is a gas, and that becomes aqueous later, once it actually becomes an acid. And also we have water here, and obviously water and hydrogen chloride will combine, but how many water molecules are there? There will be many more water molecules, so lots of water molecules, and only a few of hydrogen chloride. But if you do a model, if you just were to get the sticks and the actual balls and do that in a model kit, you don't see it going from a gas to aqueous, you don't see it dissolving. So that could be a misconception, but I think it, it just goes from, you know, it's going to stay the same state because you can't see the state changing. But that's obviously changing, that's, that would be a misconception. Another one would be that you might think that there's equal amounts of hydrogen chloride as there is water, because in the actual model there would be equal amounts. But overall you can imagine there'd be many more water molecules surrounding those hydrogen chloride molecules. So these are some of the misconceptions that could be created with this model, but there are some pros. So as long as you know what kind of misconceptions can be created, then it's all good, then you only have advantages. But you should always keep in mind what kind of misconceptions could be created, and if you know them, then yeah, that won't, that won't be a disadvantage. But the actual dot point says, use available evidence to model the molecular nature of acids and stim <laughs> I wrote stimulate, that's supposed to be simulate, simuse simulate the ionization of strong and weak acids. So we're going to do those two things in our model. Again, imagine this, these were your balls and stick model kits. We have one chlorine here. This is our chlorine. And this is our hydrogen. Here we have an oxygen and two hydrogen. So this is obviously here our hydrogen chloride, or hydrogen chlorine. And this is our water molecule here. Now this is in the reactant, so now they're going to react together. And obviously happens when we create an acid, we have the actual initial substance reacting with water to become the acid form. And what will happen here is we have to model the molecular nature and we have to simulate, not stimulate, but simulate the ionization of strong and weak acids. And what I mean by the molecular, or what they mean by molecular nature, it's just to also realize what kind of molecules made up of and how many of them, the electrons. So these pink here are meant to be the electrons of the chlorine and the white is meant to be the electron of hydrogen. In this case, here they're sharing their electrons. That's a covalent bond, so they're sharing their electrons. But what you see in a second is this hydrogen will leave and stick onto the water and the actual electron will be left behind. It won't be taken with the hydrogen, right? So when it comes to the actual action, you're going to see this be in the products with only one small tiny, I'll copy this, there will be one tiny difference because you're not going to see this hydrogen there anymore, it's going to have left because what happened is the hydrogen got attached to this water molecule and thereby going from a water to a hydronium ion and this here will attach one of the actual double bonds here, one of these two and as you can see, this has not gained an actual electron, it just gained a proton, which is a hydrogen. It's gained a proton, it didn't gain an electron, which is why now it has more protons than electrons, and that's why it's positively charged. 
Whereas this one has lost its proton, it's lost the hydrogen which was a proton, but it didn't lose the actual electron, which is why it's negatively charged. These are now ions, they're not atoms anymore. There were atoms beforehand, there were molecules beforehand, but now they're ions. And there are ionic um, molecules. And there were covalent ones beforehand. Right, this would be, again, you would, won't be doing this with drawings, you will probably might, most likely be doing this with your model kit. But the things you should be focusing on is seeing that change, seeing where that hydrogen goes, right? So it goes from here, and then it will be here at the end. And you should also realize that the actual electron here, this one, doesn't get removed. It's still here as well, so it doesn't get changed. And, and what, so we said we have to do with strong acids and weak acids, and hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So we've done it with our strong acid. Now we're going to do the same procedure with our weak acid. So this is hydrogen fluorine, or hydrogen fluoride. This is our weak acid, or will be a weak acid once we put it into water. So again, this is a moment is gaseous. And then we put it into water. So we combine these two, these are our reactants. We put it into water. And again, this is hydrogen fluoride, so this is the same as here. We have fluorine itself has seven electrons in the outer shell, and it's sharing one with the, the hydrogen here, which is why it's got eight by having a covalent bond. And this is again a water molecule. And you're gonna have the same thing happening. You're gonna have this here appear in the products but it's going to have lost its hydrogen, so this hydrogen won't be attached anymore. It will be gone. Whereas the actual water molecule will also appear back in our actual products, but it won't be called a water molecule anymore. It will be called a hydronium ion. And the reason why is because this hydrogen now is not here anymore, but actually attached on one of these double bonds. The water grabbed it. And therefore, the same thing here, we have didn't gain a electron, we only gained a proton, this is a plus, this is a proton. So we have one more proton than electrons, which is why overall this is positively charged. And here we lost a proton, we lost this proton here, but we didn't lose the electron, the electron is still here, that yellow greenish thing, which is why overall it has a negative charge. And then we say plus. So this would be this part here, we've got our hydronium ion and our fluorine ion, same as this one and this one. But overall, you should realize that this here is actually the weak acid. So we've done it. We've done the dot point itself. So I'll read the dot point again. Use available evidence to model. So we've, again, you will be doing this with a molecular model kit. The mo molecular nature of acids and, I always want to read stimulate, simulate the ionization of strong and weak acids. So the actual molecular model or molecular nature is the fact that you have these, you know, these covalent bonds here and then later there are ions, and we can show that by having electrons stick in the actual molecular molecule. And you've, we've simulated the ionization by, in this case, this hydrogen ending up on the other side, and thereby it going from neutral, so it has no charge here, to positive, which means it's become an ion. The same thing happened with the actual water molecule. Here it had no charge, it was neutral, but then it's wait up, yeah, then it's lost its it gained a proton. I hate confusing myself. Uh, so yeah, it was negative a neutral charge here, no charge here, and then it actually gained a proton. Didn't gain an electron, which is why it's positively charged. Same thing happened for the hydrogen fluoride and water. We had an ionization, so they were negative and positive in the products, but in the actual reactants they had no charge, they were both negative. They were both Covalently bonded, now they're molecules and now they're ions. And so for this dot point, you should remember whatever you will be doing in class and why as well. So you've done what you would have looked at. You would have looked at the nature of acids, the molecular nature, and you would have simulated the ionization of strong and weak acids. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.